Hi Aquarius, welcome to your August 2021 reading. So I'm experimenting on readings this month on how to do them. I did the first four in one way and it felt too much. It felt like there was just too much and so I really like this new flow that I have going that I've done with Sagittarius and Capricorn. So I think I'm going to keep stick with it. Um, stick with the flow. It's just easier to do it that way. So if you would like to get the full version of your reading, you can do it in a couple of ways. You can click join underneath the video or you can look in the description box, go over to Patreon and join as a member over there to get the full reading or you can go to Vimeo and just get the video or you can get the series of videos which also includes the weekly updates, astrology and tarot. Um, yeah, so that's what we're going to do. Um, this is going to be a really interesting month for you guys. Um, kind of started off with a bang. You have this Saturn just hanging out and, you know, still sort of in this square to Uranus, like five degrees away from each other in that square to Uranus. The last full moon that you had just as Leo season started, that was really heavy. Like that really brought a lot of things out, brought a lot of things to the surface that needed to be looked at and really looked at in a big way, right? Um, you're going to have another full moon just before the sun goes into Virgo on the 22nd of August. And that too is going to be, man, showing, like really shining a light on the very last pieces of those things that you're hanging on to. People, situations, belief systems, stuff like that. Because the amount that you have, the, the amount of stuff that you have, um, healed, you've gone through, you've healed, you've overcome, let's put it that way, the amount, that stuff you have now, you have this like expansive, this massive expansive space for you to start filling things up, right? And the energy in August is very, very fast. There's a lot of information going on. Uh, Uranus in Taurus is making aspects to the sun, to Venus, to Mercury, um, all in just this first week of August. And that's all happening where your partnerships, your relationships in the seventh house. And so even having to, to look at that, and it's, I'm not even in romantic ways. This can be like long-term relationships that you have with people. This can include friendships. This can include partnerships with businesses. I mean, it can also be romantic partners. Uh, there's a lot of things that can be missed. There's a lot of communication issues. There's a lot of, like you may have to repeat yourself two or three more times and that person still doesn't hear you. It's going to sound like you're speaking a foreign language basically to people, right? So really allowing yourself to to look at things and not place expectations on how everything is going to turn out, any kind of conversations that you have to have, any kind of... Um, dealings that you know just anything that you're really going through if you are finding yourself that there's like you keep on hitting a wall with it or nobody's understanding what you're saying you may need to take a step back and allow yourself to be like okay i'm gonna approach this at a different time because obviously now is not that time to do that that's going to help the chaos in a, in a really big way all right let's look at your cards the four of pentacles the Six of Wands, the Ten of Swords. So, really 
feels like you're saving up money this feels like you're overcoming something pretty big right um this this six of wands with the ten of swords feels like you're overcome over over coming something in a really really massive way like that's the end of a cycle that ten of swords is, an, is the end of a cycle for you wasn't an easy one feels very painful extremely painful and then with the four of pentacles I, it feels to me like it's sort of a warning that it's really, and I don't even know if I want to call it a warning. Um, it's the advice to start saving money, to start saving your money because there's a celebration that's coming. And I feel like the celebration that's going to be happening is very, I mean, feels like it's time. That six of wands is being recognized for a job well done. That six of wands is the victory after the sorrow, after the pain. And the four of pentacles, I don't want you to hold on to the negative aspects of things. There's nothing that you need to hold on to anymore. The six of wands feels very much like freedom. Okay, now down here we have the king of cups. We have the two of pentacles and we have the lovers. This is like a solid read. Very easy, very straight to the point. I feel like there's a water sign that's in your life. It's not a water sign, it's just somebody who has a lot of emotions, maybe doesn't necessarily show them. Um, could be very intuitive. Can be a man, can be a woman. I don't do gender stuff. So we have the King of Cups, we have the Two of Pentacles, and we have the Lovers. I feel like you're trying to decide either, <laughs> either this is you being extra emotional and trying to decide if the if you want to be with the Gemini. That could be one thing. The other thing is if you're trying to decide whether this King of Cups is this kind of lover's relationship. And I'm going to tell you that the lover's relationship isn't really so much a romantic one as it is a necessary one. And a lot of times the lover's relationship is more about aligning to yourself, your masculine and feminine energies aligning to themselves. And yeah. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, because I feel like there's this, you could very well be holding on to whatever kind of relationship that you're having with this water sign. And you're holding on to that for, and you're not supposed to be anymore. And the vacillating, see, when we're trying to make a decision, what we're actually doing when we're sitting here and we're like, okay, I could either go this way or I could go this way. What we're actually doing is trying to make a decision based on the outside world or like the, the perspective of something that's outside of us and our own intuitive guide or initial intuitive guidance. Like we're making a decision based on whatever we were programmed and conditioned to believe, right? And I was talking to Capricorn about this too. Maybe this is a Saturn lesson that we're all having to learn. When you're trying to make a decision in your life, I want you to stop and ask yourself, am I making a decision with my ego on the outside based on a conditioning or a belief system that I have? Or am I making the decision based on my own intuitive guidance? That's going to tell you a lot about why you're holding on so tightly. So, we're going to look at these cards. I'm going to clarify everything in the extended. Again, you can get the extended with Vimeo or um, by becoming a member. Um, also, I have a couple of benefits coming up this month. One is this weekend um, on the 8th, which will be the new moon in Leo also. Uh, it's a tarot benefit. It's going to be live on the Fearless Intuition channel starting at 6 p.m. Eastern. 
And then I have an astrology benefit going on on August 15th with four amazing astrologers. And if you want to get the virtual tickets for that, you can go to my website or click under the description box and go directly to the astro benefit to get your virtual ticket there. It's going to be really, really amazing. And they're going to be answering your own astrology questions if, if you have some. So that'll be really cool. So I hope to see you guys. I love you and have a wonderful August. See you in your extended. Bye.